Welcome back to the Tim Leck series, because this one's going to be good. We're going to be reassembling it today, or at least starting to reassemble it, because we got our solid cast, apparently it's aluminium, uh, I mean, uh, yeah it probably is, uh, it doesn't feel light enough to be aluminium, but you know, they probably know better than I do. Uh, also, we got a bit of a sprue there, so I don't like that much. Oh, and it's gone. Right. Uh, yeah, we're going to reassemble it. Hopefully, it'll go back together the way it was when before I took it apart. If it does not, that's not usually a good sign. So all of these parts have been cleaned. And I will start with the last bit I took off, which is this. This whole thing. Like that. Right, that was nice and satisfying. But I reckon this is going to go together very, very satisfyingly. This will be a nice, relaxing repair. I think. I don't want to. Don't want to say that now, just in case it's not. And already, I'm fumbling with these screws, which is not usually the best thing. So I'll put these in. Da -da 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 -da. One, make sure they're nice and tight, so that the stator is hard up against the main plate, whatever it's called. This doesn't really have front plate and, front plate and back plate, it's sort of all in one piece. Frame, I guess you could say. We've got this. And the other one holds the flicky flicky. Which I might put in later, because it's a bit of an a bit of an auxiliary thing, uh, whatever the word is, bit of an extra, bit of a something that you probably won't need to put in right now, and I want to make it nice and easy. So all of our cleaned parts. Da -da 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 -da. We got our nice solid rotor, which weighs a lot. Uh, yeah, this is definitely a manual start rotor right here. This is very very heavy. Makes a good spinning top though. Oh, that is actually pretty good. Most uh, clock parts do make good spinning tops. And we have our, our bearings for the thing which I'll put in now actually. I think this is the first part we can put in. So here and here, da -da 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 -da, zoom. Uh, here and here with the screws are the mounting points for these bearings. And this one, as it's a bit roughed up, is the one I took out with more force. So I'll put this up here, but not all the way, because I want to put a bit of oil in them, actually. That's a proper oil on the end of here. I have also oiled up the actual teeth of the fibre wheel, because those go dry uh, and crumbly. I'll also put a tiny bit of oil on here. And if I get it the right way around, yeah, this must be the right way around, because the it will line up with the middle of the rotor. So this goes here. Something like that. There we go. And I'll put this in here. And this was up all the way up against it. So I'll push it all the way in. This brass thing I'm talking about. And already it's difficult. This thing was very hard to put back in again. Very hard to take out rather, and now it's even harder to put back in again. Don't know. I can't think of another way of doing it. Oh yes, the old twist and squeeze. All right, there we go. It's getting there. And yeah, this is getting pretty scratched up. So uh, if you're the kind of person who cares about that, I advise you look away. Ah, there we go, that went in. So as you can see, it's hard up against the edge, as it was. But now, not stuck, because it's been cleaned and lubricated. Now this one went on about halfway. 
So I'll put it on until it no longer gets, until the friction gets too much for it. Think about about there. Yeah, maybe a bit more. You want the balance between slack and not. I feel like it's on a bit much actually now. Uh, but this one is not as difficult as the other one was. So yeah, it's very, very slightly slack, but I can still spin it. This is the perfect situation. Yeah, I can hear a tiny bit of a click in there. But I think we've got it about perfect. So we'll tighten these up. Oh, I've just noticed this one's come out again, actually. That's why. That's why this one wasn't on all the way. You might want to tap it in with a hammer or something, whatever you can find, preferably not pliers. Uh, and I'll tighten this up now actually. So it does not venture out. Lovely. A bit off centre that, isn't it? Uh, I can't do anything about it, but uh, fibre gear really, I don't want to be bending that thing. And here it is, here's the place. And yeah, this I think is about how it was in the beginning. So we got a nice bit of slack in there. And I think also drip feed a bit of oil into the actual thing itself. One there. Uh, one there. We just have enough room for my screwdriver to fit in. And that should give us even more thingy power. <laughs> there we go. That should be perfectly fine. That should be about right. So, with that done, which took 7 minutes and 13 seconds for some reason, uh, the next part, I think, was this. There should be a springy bit somewhere. Ah oh, yes, the good old misplacing show. This is basically what this is. Yeah, this is the alarm spring. So this goes on. And it attaches to that hole down there. So this seems to be correct. This thing goes under the hammer. Yeah, that's about right. Everything is under spring loaded springness. And I did not want to tinker with that screw, which is in the metal right now, because that is the adjustment screw, and I don't want to have to calibrate something that I don't need to calibrate, so I did not take it out. But I cleaned around it instead. Hopefully this just goes in, which it is, going in all the way maybe, about right, and ah, why is this going in there, that should not be in there, backtrack a little bit, yeah this should not be in that hole, Ooh. Should be outside the hole. Right, let's try that again. Yeah, this is quite a complicated thing. I would say it's over complicated for a synchronous alarm clock. There are plenty of designs out there. I don't know why they decided to go for the most convoluted one possible. Although the engineering in this is very nice. I don't know if it quite redeems the complexity of it. Still a nice thing nonetheless. That's about right. And this is the alarm on and offer. 
it is off, it is on, it is off, it is on. Uh, I think I got that about right. And there's no going wrong with that, hopefully. Although it could be a little bit more precise. Uh, tell you what. Yeah, there we go. That wedge is right in there now. We haven't gone that far in 10 minutes, have we? Uh, what's next? That's the big question. What's next? Let me just put these wheels in. Uh, so yeah, a lot of wheels. And not necessarily the knowledge of where they go. Uh, one goes here, I know that. So this is the time setting one. And this is the back of the movement. So the knob sticks out through there. Like that. This is a fact that this goes here, I know that. Uh, and there's also this as well. So this goes here. And I remember having to take them out at sort of the same time. So that goes there. Uh, we've got another one. somewhere. Yeah, I don't know where this thing goes. Unless it just goes like that. Uh, that would be the simplest option. Let's try that again with this the other way up. Yeah, I think we got it. Oh, don't do that. This seems about right. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll go back and check my original footage. It's been 12 minutes, so uh, yeah, part one of the reassembly complete. The fibre gear and the alarm bit. See you next time. Thanks.